May the Lord open. We have been bought good weather. May his bountiful harvest throw away all of the books. We have destroyed them all, and we have no longer got any more to read. May the Lord open. <laughs> Under his eye. <laughs> so there's this TikTok video that's gone viral, and it's featuring Covenant Bible Church pastor Joel Webin, and he's preaching from the pulpit on the role of women in the Christian household. In this video, he admits to regulating his wife's reading, dictating what materials she's even allowed to explore. In addition to controlling his wife, he also proclaimed, showing no signs of shame whatsoever, as you point out, that he also rules his children's lives with an iron hand, even dictating when they can use the bathroom. Needless to say, this video has brought a lot of pushback against the pastor. This story is from ScaryMommy.com by Katie Garrity, and it was published on April 5th, 2024. So after reading this, the first thing that came to my mind was, is this abuse? Okay, so we can clearly, it's, he's, there's a line and he's gone well beyond the line of, of healthy interactions uh, within his family. Um, but my thoughts were, is it abusive? So he thinks that what he's doing is right. He's think that he's doing right by his family. On the one hand, I think intentions do make a difference. I think intentions do uh, come into come into play here. In his mind, he's trying to do what's right. But on the other hand, there is such thing as uh, negligence. And so- and coercive and controlling behavior. What's that? And coercive and controlling behavior. Exactly, exactly. And so, um, so what, but what if his wife is eagerly consenting? You know, do we have a right to judge how they live in their family? It, it made me think of uh, the wearing of hijab by uh, Muslim women. Uh, very often we'll see uh, Muslim women saying that they choose to wear it and that they're proud to wear it and that it's a way for them to express their commitment to their religion. Um, while the rest of the different. world, I think that's slightly different in this case because that's someone choosing their own attire. Here, the guy is you would is think prohibiting. Yeah. Here's the guy is prohibiting left, right, and center what can and cannot be consumed here. Right, but what I'm saying is that is she consenting to that model? Okay, is she consenting to that model? Is she consenting to this type of relationship that he's getting into? And and I and I'm so, I'm starting to sound like I'm defending him, so I need to change what I'm saying now because I'm starting to feel kind of icky. Um, so, what if it's some sort of Stockholm syndrome? It could be. It very well could be. It could be. But mm -hmm. what? So the way we judge these kind of things is what would a reasonable person do in this instance? And I think that definitely tips the scales. That definitely pushes us into the wrong end of the spectrum. At the very least, at the very least, it's unfair oppression. Uh, at the worst, though, it's just straight up abuse writ large. And there's simply no good reason uh, that uh, that anybody, much less a Christian family, would need to treat women this way. The thing to remember, though, is you've got kids, though, and the kids can't consent to this. The kids don't have a choice in this matter. So whilst it's his wife, he says that he controls the lives of his kids as well. Right. And the problem here is when he starts saying that he's controlling the life of his kids, and then we go back to the beginning of this where we start going, under his eye, may the Lord open, blah, 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 mm -hmm. referencing the Handmaid's Tale, because there's no consent there when it comes to the children. The children are not consenting to this. It's being done to them as a product of being part of this family. Mm -hmm. if I think that argument could be made is, for the wife as well. But the wife has chosen to enter into the marriage with him in the first place. And that's yeah, a the, slightly the, the, the different marriage, thing. Maybe, the, maybe the marriage, she's chosen. Not the nature of the relationship. I think, this is a product, right. I think this is a product of the religion. I think because it reminds me, and I've talked about this on the show before, but it reminds me of like this graphic that I've seen that has like this is the the uh, model for a Christian marriage or a godly marriage, and it's like the top umbrella is the church or God, yep. and then the yep. middle one is the husband, and the bottom one is the wife, and it is intended that the wife is like subservient to the husband and is supposed to listen, and it's like even in the Bible, you look at um, what do we have here? We have First uh, Timothy two eleven through twelve. A woman should uh, learn in quietness and full submission. Uh, do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. She must be silent. 
it. There's Ephesians 5.22, wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. These are things that are taught in Christianity. And, and I think that's why I think you can make that same argument for the wife that she was taught this growing up and that that's how she's supposed to be. Not only does he think this is okay, she thinks this is okay. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah, the Ephesians and- quote you make there, that has been interpreted many ways. Uh, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. That has been interpreted in other sides as, as be equal, be subject to one another, not be, you know, hierarchical. There, 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 is, there is also a verse in the Bible that says, you know, subject yourselves to one another. Yeah. So everyone reads the uh, wives be submissive to your husbands, but there is also a verse where it does say submit yourselves, uh, you know, to 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 each other. Be subject to one another. Yeah. Hmm. And I suppose that this is the point. This we, one says as to the Lord, so Damien, that wouldn't Damien, be a mutual like relationship. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say like we don't have the wife. We're only speculating on the wife's perspective. So we clearly have the hus- the the pastor slash husband's perspective, but we don't have the wife. So when the, I think it was uh, Scott or Scott Eli, but you said that yeah, you know, the wife is submitting to this. Well, the thing is, that, is she really? Does she have a choice? Does she feel like she has a choice? Because let's say this is a let's say this is a secular marriage in which the husband is abusive and the wife feels no option uh, to escape. Would we then say that she is willingly submitting to a, an abusive marriage? So I think speculating on the wife's intentions or beliefs is a little bit hard in this situation without having her. So are you saying her, here that religion like, is being used as an point. excuse for this behaviour? I, I think, like in yeah, uh, the, obviously the religion is being used as an excuse. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that speculating on the wife's uh, acceptance of it is speculative. Speculative at this stage, without having her direct words. If we got the wife in a room by herself and said, "You, you know, what you say in this room stays in this room. What do you really think?" Would she say, "Yeah, I love this arrangement. You know, everything settled for me," or "I really want my own freedom"? Can can you help me find a way out? I also find it ironic that we're reading this article, considering she probably wouldn't be allowed to read this article in the first place. Yeah. Well, at and, least not until after he's read it and given the thumbs up for it, right? Or the thumbs oh, yeah, down. Hey, honey, he's he's thumbs down right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But we get into the, the thing here. Well, where does religion start and grotesque abuse start in these cases, Eli? Oh, I mean, there's definitely a lot of overlap, I think. Um, I, I, I don't think that because it is religion that it is not grotesque abuse. So I, I think that it, that if, if you can call it abuse, you can call it that whether it is a tenant or a, a, a factor of a religious belief or not. Uh, I, I think that abusive behavior to to – more to a degree more so than not is is objective rather than subjective and um i i I think um scott made a good point about you know there are there are plenty of uh women in islam who do say they choose to wear the hijab and 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 don't see it as oppressive and problematic or abusive and and that in, in their subjective view, they don't see it as abusive. But if you look at the idea of somebody controlling the actions and the decisions and the mode of dress and any aspect of another person's life, I, I think you start to encroach into abusive behavior at that point. Well, I mean, take Afghanistan and Iran, for example. Those countries, they see it as acceptable to control the dress of women in particular because it's been institutionalized. And are we as a society as a Western society here, what right do we actually have to start complaining about what these other cultures are doing? Why are we imposing what we consider to be correct here on these people? If they think it's fine, it's fine, Scott, isn't it? Um, Well, on one hand, we could say yes, but on the other hand, we could say that there is definite manipulation here, and it's not just manipulation at the top level. It's not just today being manipulated, you know, your husband telling you to do what you do. It's manipulation that's been taking place since childhood. It's it's deeply ingrained in their development, you know, when, you know, the, the famous saying, you know, give me a child when... But before he's six years old and, and I'll have him for life. Right. And so they, they train them from an early age to uh, to not only 
uh, be accepting of, of these religious dictates and these religious standards, but also to be uh, proud and enthusiastic about embracing them, about uh, it's part of their identity. It's part of, it's part of the way families are meant to be and part of the way families are supposed to be. And so when, when, uh, you know, these people grow up and then they become adults. Yes, they're technically giving, uh, they're technically giving uh, consent, but are they really? I mean, is it really a heartfelt consent? Is it really an informed consent? Is it really a freely given consent? It's hard to say. So to answer your question, can we judge other other cultures? Of course, we can judge them. Are we justified in judging them? Well, it depends how we couch that judgment. And so it, it would it would really depend. I think that it's it doesn't take much of an argument to to show that there is oppression happening here, that there is, um, you know, rights being uh, taken away and, and restricted from uh, from this man's wife. And, and so. You know, it's it's uh, there. I think it was was Eli that was said that there is objective uh, abuse happening or is is objective oppression happening, and, and that's a there's a clear case to be made for that. And and I think that um, just because a culture is accepting of something does not mean that it's healthy, and it does not mean that it's good. And I mean, following on from that, I mean, as the resident non-American resident here, Damien. <laughs> What's your take on seeing this as somebody who is from the land down under? And what is it like seeing this from an Australian perspective? I mean, is this shocking to you if this was happening in Australia? Would it be more or less shocking if it was happening in some uh, great yeah. big mega church? Yeah, well, I would say uh, if this was in Australia, I think there would be, uh, especially considering that right now Australia is going through this uh, this very large discussion about gender-based violence and abuse. So if it came out that a pastor was uh, essentially abusing his wife in this way, I think that would that would add fuel fuel to the fire, uh, so to speak. But just reading uh, reading this story, um, it really sounds like a prison where in prison your mail is read before you get it and you know the prison authorities will cut out uh, certain articles in the newspaper before they give you the newspaper and uh, and it really it really got me thinking that this is, this is essentially a cult if you're you know if you're only allowed certain information or opinions that are pre-approved and vetted by a higher authority then that is that is essentially a, a cult and i remember from my time in a in a fundamentalist charismatic uh, church group you know you were i suppose uh the word of the pastor was like the highest authority in the church and so if the pastor didn't like something or if the pastor you know said i really wouldn't read that if i were you you know you it was like anathema to, to, to read it and I so mean, that's common in a lot of religions i mean take jehovah's witnesses who shun people for consuming indeed. ungodly like materials or the but I was, I was also who do the same yeah, I was also going to say though that America seems to be very, very good at this uh, this fundament fundamentalist religion, in that you know you have you know your Appalachian snake handlers and you have these you know like the Amish. Actually, I was going to say this is like the Amish, where the Amish will raise their children you know, up until they're 18. And then if I, if I have it correct at 18, they let their children go for a year to decide if they, if they want to come back. Well, if you've, if you've raised a child for 18 years in a very strict, uh, in a very strict way and then let them go, uh, of course they're going to struggle and want to come back because you've taken away all the, all their support. There's no but yeah, skills um, there at all is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I suppose to me, like if a, if a pastor read a book and, and the wife goes, Hey, you know, what do you, as you know, if the wife was reading a book and the husband goes, you know, Hey, what's, what's in that book? The, you know, the, the right response should be, Hey honey, is there anything interesting in that book that we could both learn? Not, yeah. you know, take it away. I'm going to read it for you. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, you are allowed yeah. to, Otherwise, With a black it's, marker it's, having it's, cut out nasty little words, and but the exactly. thing is, otherwise, yeah. otherwise, it's essentially a marriage cult. Yeah, and I mean, I'm a married woman. I don't consider my marriage to be a cult. I mean, <laughs> do, does anyone else on the panel <laughs> consider marriage to be a cult? Eli Scott, do you think marriage is a cult? 
Well, I, I'm not saying marriage itself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed that this... to answer no to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, do you think marriage is a cult? Uh, I'm no longer married. I can answer however I want. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, is we marriage a cult? No, but Damien, married. no, you, Damien, you said you you meant the 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 religion, or at least his his church is a cult of interpretation. Of his interpretation of the religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not saying marriage itself is a cult. I'm saying that this marriage, this particular marriage, in which information is controlled, and even like the toilet breaks for the children are controlled that's a bit weird that's a bit weird that is, that's a bit weird. That is way weird that's more than a bit weird that's just that is that's yeah like i just suburbia i don't get that at all weird that is that's and like I wonder, secret life of suburbia weird <laughs> i wonder if he was just kind of using hyperbole at that point but honestly at the same time i was so surprised like i thought when he said he had the four people whose lives he control i was so certain that his wife was going to be one of those four people that i was surprised to find out that his wife has four kids and not three but he, he does say in the video like they are my children so he's talking about his kids but i was really surprised that I, he, so he, he doesn't even consider it to be controlling her life that's no, what that's doesn't. saying yeah yeah exactly now, that's the more question, sinister now, thing about it now here's a question for all three of you if she was doing it to him would this be a more shocking story eli it'll be more interesting would it be more shocking? I, I I would be more surprised to see that dynamic, um, especially with him being like in their culture, in their uh, religion, and in their uh, circumstances. I would be surprised to see that dynamic. Would I be surprised to learn of something like that happening? Generally speaking, not at all. No, I think that's absolutely within the realm of of reason. Yeah, it would be more surprising. It wouldn't be any more offensive, but it would be, be more, less more unusual. <laughs> Would it be any less offensive? You said it wouldn't it, be any more offensive. Would it be? It any would less be offensive? equally offensive. Yeah. I mean, Damien, do, would would it be more or less offensive? Would it be weird to see it? Uh, it, it, it would. It would definitely be weird. Um, and look, I agree. It's equally it's equally offensive because you know, to me, a good marriage is where both partners uh, are equal. You know, can equally share with each other. You know, so it seems yeah. to me like a controlling a controlling marriage is a controlling marriage. You know, mm. there's this there is the, the the trope that the wife, you know, happy wife, happy mm. life. You know, which and I mean, old marriage vows like, used to say that the woman used to used to use the word submit in the marriage vows. <laughs> I mean, Queen Elizabeth II, Winston Churchill famously tried to have the word submit removed from the marriage vows when yeah. married. Um, the Duke of Edinburgh, as he then became, because she was the head of the Church of England and she could only be submitted to God, not mm -hmm. to a man on earth. Mm -hmm. When uh, yeah, when my I wife see. and I got married, we uh, we her my wife's uncle, who was a minister, married us. She'd always wanted to have that done, and that was fine. I agreed with that, and he gave us some vows that we could that we were intended to build on. But we decided we were going to take out the obey. There was love, honor, and obey, and we said, you know take that obey out that's just <laughs> that's going a little too yeah. far that's crossing the line for us and so um so yeah so so we didn't we didn't want to include that in our own commitment to each other fair enough it's such a strange concept if you think about it like i'm this i'm going to choose a person to obey for the rest of my life right, right <laughs> no yeah. why would so, i want to do that <laughs> but the problem is in in american fundamentalist religion uh, especially when you get to the idea of purity culture the idea of, um, you know, a, a woman choosing a man to sit under as her authority isn't that alien, is that alien or strange? It's right. only it's only alien and strange yeah. to us who have been in there and now outside of it. It's like, well, hold on. Yeah. Why would a woman, you know, <laughs> willingly sit under the authority of a man for the rest of a yeah, rest of her life? It's like, well, it, can, it, but, it reminds um, me of, uh, of the psychological concept of learned helplessness right so learned helplessness yeah. you know you know that there's nothing you can do about it and so you become helpless like kind of like um in the shawshank redemption when uh one of the older uh prisoners brooks i think his name was he he gets out and he, bef before they let him out he actually tries to kill one of the other prisoners because he doesn't want to leave to, he doesn't yeah. know how he doesn't know how to deal with the world he doesn't know how to interact and you know he ends up harming himself but but uh it's you know it's it's learned helpless yeah. helplessness mm -hmm. he's had that it's, for such a long yeah. time she's had this for a long time these families have had this this type of uh this normality for a long time and then and they get used to it and then they can't function outside of it 
I mean, in social services, there's a in social work, there's another concept called uh, de-skilling people. Mm. Like you try to do everything for somebody because you think you're helping them, right. but in I fact, you're actually de-skilling them. Mm -hmm. And I do hope that this has skilled you up to be a bit more knowledgeable on this. And if you want to read more about this article and see other non-profit episodes, please follow the links in the description below.